from a flightless simulator at Ferris Air to a momentous meeting in an alley to the complex mind of an architect to every far sector in space and to the brilliance of the central power battery on OA this is the podcast that covers the adventures of all of your favorite ring slingers this is the Emerald Echo with your hosts Adam and the Emerald Enthusiast Welcome to another episode of Emerald Echo, a Green Lantern podcast and vidcast. As always, I'm your host, Adam. And with me is my co-host, the Emerald Enthusiast himself, Donnie. Donnie, how's it going? Hey, what's up, Ring Slingers? It's the man whose ring runs on Fanboy Energy, the podcasting machine, the big nerd in green. It's the Emerald Enthusiast. And we're back with the adventures of Kyle Rayner. Indeed we are. Um... And these issues, unlike the last bunch we did, had quite a bit of Kyle Rayner, and I was appreciative of that. Yeah. Um, but um, it's always good to continue looking at the uh, stories of Kyle Rayner. Uh, always a fun time. Um, and um, for the most part, With the exception of maybe one, I mean, I enjoyed them all to varying degrees, mm-hmm. but three were far better than one of the ones, that, and we'll, we'll get to which one and why. Right. But, but it was but, an important development in terms of something for Guy Gardner, but it wasn't the most action-packed issue. I think that's what you're talking about. No, no, I'm talking about. Uh, you think I'm talking about the Warrior issue, right? Right. I'm not. I'm talking okay. about the outside. I'm talking all about right, the outsiders then. issue. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, but we'll get to that. We'll get to it yeah. when we get there. But Donnie, since we kind of spoiled two of the issues, which issues are we going to cover today and get us get us rolling? Okay, we are going to cover Guy Gardner Warrior issue number 28, Green Lantern number 60, number 60, 60, Guy hmm. Gardner Warrior number 29, and Outsiders volume 2 number 17. All right, let's go for it. Yeah. So we open up with Guy Gardner, Warrior number 28. Remember at this point, you know, Guy Gardner, his Voldarian powers have manifested. That's why he looks the way he does. This issue, one thing uh, you should note here, Daryl Banks is one of the cover artists. That's why this cover looks so good. It actually has Kyle and and Warrior, Warrior being uh, Guy Gardner and Major Force on the cover. Yeah, not the ultimate warrior, though. Not the ultimate warrior, but no, he didn't look far off from him. I'll tell no, you he actually did have. I mean, qu- quite a bit of uh, similarities there. So uh, what, we what? also we we see them fighting in front of the Lincoln Memorial, which I thought was really cool. So what year was this comic done? Uh, I believe this was nineteen ninety five. Yeah, this. I mean, it's all '90s, obviously, but I believe this was. Yeah, so the war the warrior was in was it, the ultimate warrior was in play. Yes. During those years, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, um, I really like how... Now, this opens up with a lot of action. We see Guy and Major Force basically trading huge haymakers because Guy thinks that Force has his mother. And Kyle... We see Kyle show up eventually. He intervenes because he saw the fight on the Titans monitor. And... There's <laughs> there's a lot of trash talk between Guy and Major Force at the start, which I thought was a lot of fun. Right, Major yeah. Force is really shocked by just how powerful Guy is with his Voldarian powers. And the Quorum, again, we know we talked about the Quorum being the group earlier in Kyle's um, origin. They're the group that's trying to get the Green Lantern ring away from Kyle. Mm-hmm. And So they're able to get Major Force out of the fight. And we also see a character named Honey um, give Kyle and Guy a tip about where Force is later on. And Kyle and Guy then come back and they meet Major Force, who is now back with the Quorum. And they double team Major Force at this point. And then shockingly, Here comes a character named Militia, or at least we're led to believe at this point that it's Militia. 
Militia is a character that was primarily published in the 90s and early 2000s, and a character who hasn't been, to my knowledge, published since 2008. This is actually Guy's older brother, Mace, right. who was paralyzed and then given prosthetics, like, you know, robotic, cybernetic prosthetics from the waist down. Mm-hmm. And so this character shows up and intervenes when Guy and Kyle are fighting with Major Force. Yeah. So again, it very fast moving issue because it was a lot of like fighting outside and uh, Major Force employing dirty tactics to try to get away from Guy Gardner. And of course, Guy is very concerned about the whereabouts of his mother. And that's continued into Green Lantern 60. By the way, I really like the fact that uh, in Green Lantern 60, the fact that we see that Kyle has been, you know, debating about whether to kill Major Force. Mm -hmm. And I believe, you know, one of the lines was, you know, I can't inflict enough pain on you for what you've done. Mm -hmm. And so we see that that has still at this point has been something that is bubbling up and Kyle is dealing with that. So what do you think of the first issue? I I really had a lot of fun with the first issue. It was literally It was like watching an episode of pro wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> because you've got two people, you know, beating the crap out of each other. One decides to use a foreign object on the other. In comes a sort of like a partner to help the one that's being beat on. A run <laughs> and in. Then, yeah, <laughs> run in, exactly. The run, you get the run in. And then they agree to team up, when, even though it looks like they're all numbered. I, I mean, it literally was if you're a wrestling fan, you're going to love this issue. If you're a Green Lantern and a wrestling fan, which I happen to be in both categories, you're really going to love mm-hmm. that, that this issue. By the way, this is part two and part three, the two the two issues that we're talking about here. This is a part of a storyline called Capital Punishment. Uh, and I, I love the idea, just the dynamic that, that um, Guy and um, and what's the what's his brother's Mace? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the brother dynamic and the, and the, and the adversarial the situation to put in. That made the issue interesting. Uh, but also, you know, major force, again, bringing up the refrigerator incident. Yeah. Um, was was a gut punch. Yeah. And uh, and I yeah. like the fact that he showed no remorse over it whatsoever. Oh, he doesn't care. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's pro- he's yeah, in, fact, in fact, he said, next time, maybe I'll stick her in the microwave if, yeah. if I get to do it again. Yeah, yeah. he's pro- he probably himself. Um, but I, I like how in the editorial note, they're like, uh, when, he, when he makes the reference, you know, they had the, the editorial bubble, they're like, see the now in- infamous Green Lantern issue, you know, and then they, but yeah. the fact that even they noticed, you know, they noted in their reference the 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 the, the, the sort of reaction that the story was getting, mm-hmm. I, I thought it was very clever. Yeah. Um, well, I, it was controversial at the time. It remains controversial, even though it's a lot of time has passed now. Obviously, you and I agree on the fact that it needed to happen, and uh, obviously, I like that moment, despite how you know. Uh, Shocking it is, but I like it because that I think it works for the story, you know. Uh, yeah, it's really important for Kyle. So, and I really like the art in this issue. Mm, yeah. Well, are we talking about the first issue or or first uh, issue. Yeah, 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 yeah? Oh yeah, no, that was good too. Now the second issue again, we get back to Daryl Banks. Yeah. Who you know again, his art is unparalleled. But yeah. So do you want to go into the second issue or? Yeah, so... How Green, do you want to do this? you want to rate them all together or separately? How, it, it's your show. Remember, you're the host. It's our show, though, but, I, you know... Yeah, you're I'm the host. Qual- I'm, I, I, unlike what you, what you may read by some disgruntled people online, 
I'm very cooperative. So, <laughs> I, you know, I like to uh, get your, your input. I say we do them individually just okay. because the nature of the comic, right? Yeah. And, and, I mean, different artists and right. all that jazz. So let, letter grade totally? Yeah. Yeah. I no, give it, no, okay. no, no, no. Uh, art of the story, five and five, remember? Oh, right. Okay, yes. Okay. So uh, I'm going to say art five, story four. You know, it wasn't as much. It moved along at a brisk pace. Oh, it was a fast read, yeah. Yeah, very fast read. Like I said, it was it was just two big guys trading haymakers. Yeah. So if you like a very quick read, just a lot of, you know, it was, fun it was battle, yeah. It was match of the Ultimate Warrior versus Brock Lesnar. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. only, so I'm going to give it a... I'm going to give it a four for the story and four and a half for art. Here's the reason I'm giving it a four and a half, and it's not really the artist's fault. It's more the colors. Mm -hmm. um, um, what's this? Guy Gardner looks like he's borderline, like, like his coloring was off. Okay. He looked kind of orangey. I don't know if you noticed that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, did he go to the Trump tanning salon? Because he's <laughs> rather orange. And I don't know if there is a tanning salon. That, you know, I, mean, I know there was Trump steaks at one point. Yeah. Trump University. So maybe, maybe he tans where Hulk Hogan does. So. Or, or, yeah, either Hulk Hogan or Trump, which, wherever, whichever tanning salon he goes to. Uh, maybe he goes to Hogan's Beach and in there there's a tanning salon. Uh, but no, he looked a little a little off off color orange to me. So uh, mm -hmm. it was a little awkward because then in the Green Lantern issue, he looks I don't know no, normal skin tones. What you're saying? Right, yeah, right, yeah. 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 Um, you know, so you had the two contrasting colors, purple and orange, and I'm like, all right, this is a popsicle. Yeah. Well, that's Macho Man's colors. So yeah, but I understand that. <laughs> Macho Man wears it on his uniform. <laughs> yeah. Not like he wasn't orange. Right. Uh, <laughs> he may have been high two thirds of the time, but he wasn't orange. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Um, so yeah, four and four and a half. Yeah. Writing and art uh, specifically. All right. Green Lantern number 60. Green Lantern number 60 picks up again with Guy and Kyle fighting the forces of the quorum. Now, I really like, and I'm going to read this word for word here because I like how Ron Mars encapsulates who Militia is. He okay. tells Kyle, and we're, we're talking from the point of view of Guy Gardner here, Major Force takes his orders from the quorum. So does my brother. Mace was always the big hero in the family, decorated cop, the whole bit. I couldn't get noticed unless it was, I, uh, I couldn't get noticed unless I was on fire. Mace ended up getting shot, paralyzed. Week or two later, it looked like he committed suicide, but it was the quorum. It was a quorum setup. They took him. They turned him into that thing out there, into militia. And so that's what we're dealing with here, or so we think. It's guy against his older brother. Right. Now, the interesting thing to start off this issue is we literally get the ending of the last warrior issue, but from mm -hmm. a different angle. Yeah. And I liked it. I'm like, oh, that's clever. Yeah. So Guy and Kyle face off against against militia and major force and forces of the quorum. And I like the fact that Kyle makes just a plethora of interesting constructs here here to deal with them, including when the water starts to come down from the pool. He makes that gun and, like, uses the water against them. Yes. Just always creative constructs with Kyle. That's why I love this run so much. Yeah. So Force actually gets away and goes to the hospital where the actual mace, mace is. We What we see eventually is that the militia that Guy was fighting was actually a robot. Yeah, and during that initial fight, uh, I just want to call out two things. Um, one was the idea that, you know, um, 
uh, guy told Kyle, you know, basically, don't touch my brother. He's mine to deal with, right? Right, right. Uh, and then at one point, guy clotheslines, literally clotheslines. Yeah, even close to the clothesline. Yeah, I, love, yeah. I loved it. <laughs> you know, you got to love that these guys are, the guys in charge yeah. of Green Lantern at this time were wrestling fans. I just right. love it. So uh, Kyle wants to kill Major Force, and he says it at this point. And uh, again, at this point, they're in the hospital, and he forms this gorgeous, like sci-fi looking construct that completely immobilizes Major Force. And he makes another construct blade and starts to slice through Major Force's throat, but he can't finish it. Yeah. He lets him go and says, I, I can't do this. He's like, it wasn't that long ago that I feel like I could do this, but not now. And yeah. so this is an important development in Kyle's journey as a hero. No, he's definitely grown as a hero. And it's almost like, you know, being at this point the sole ring bearer. He has a responsibility to uphold their code of ethics and ideally they're not supposed to kill mm -hmm. well there's an interesting give and take because we see well first of all major force succeeds or so we think in killing guy's brother yeah. and then it seems that you know Kyle walks away, and as Guy is preparing to kill Major Force, he was like, are you going to stop me? And Kyle doesn't. Yeah. So he doesn't want to do it on his own, but at the same time, he understands Guy's rage. Yeah. And Guy seemingly kills Major Force. Right. And I, I'm, in, I'm in full agreement uh, with, with, with um, Kyle on this. I don't, like, his whole position is it's not my place to do it i can't who i am being who i am and what i represent i can't but i have no right to stand in his way either right and i i like guy's perspective on it he's like it doesn't matter if we agree on everything as long as we're on the same side yeah. because some people are heroes like kyle and some people are just warriors yeah and, and the cool thing too is you know guy even makes a comment if I was still wearing the ring, maybe I wouldn't, mm -hmm. but I'm not. So there's that distinction, right? Right. But I, what I really like about this issue is that it's both characters exploring their position on the on the should mm -hmm. we kill issue. Right, issue. right. And that's, and, and that's done, by the way, in front of, the, again, the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which is a symbol of the United States. And so I I like this kind of that being the backdrop of like, yeah. you know, the the philosophy of when is lethal force justified? And there was a wasn't there an OJ reference in one of these comics? Or am I a what? An OJ Simpson reference? Um, I don't know if there's I, I do know that OJ there was a, an advertisement on one of the back of the comics. No, there was a a reference it, to but a, it could it could have been, yeah. To, to the vehicle, the vehicle, right? Was, was, oh, yeah, the white Bronco, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, huh, when DC used to be okay with referencing, you know, real places and real events, where right. well, you know, actually, in one and I forget which one it is, and I, I have it here in my notes somewhere, but uh, it no, it's actually the next issue where we see Sly Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Bruce Willis on the street, yeah, okay, they witnessed the battle, so yeah. And now that I think about no, uh, yesterday I was uh, I was um, reboarding some comics, and there was there was an O.J. Simpson back before all the stuff with the white Bronco. There was an O.J. Simpson ad advertisement on the back of one of the comics, and I was like, right, this no, is, but, yeah, but in, continu in continuity, yes. yes, like DC, where like nowadays, you know, if they show a McDonald's, it's it's called something else, right, right, right. Like you know what they're alluding to, but it's not called that, mm -hmm. and like. If they're doing social media, it's not called Facebook when it's meant to be Facebook, but it's you know called something else. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know. So, but back then they kind of leaned more into yeah, there's a real place and, or a real situation, and we'll reference it. You know, right. So it's right. just funny to notice that difference. 
By the way, at the end of this issue, it's important to note, and this isn't addressed in the next issue that the next two issues that we're going to talk about. But you see someone walking through the desert. Mm-hmm. You just see feet. That's how Jordan is going to show up soon. Spoilers. Uh, yes, yeah. and and we see Gant that come back to Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was like you know what that reminded me of. Since we're on the wrestling theme, go ahead. You know those vignettes when a character's coming. And they promote I mean, that. That's like what it was, you know, one of those character <laughs> vignettes. Yeah. yeah uh, so so now we, we're going to move. We, wait, we should rate this one, right? Oh, uh, well, five and five for me. I mean, I. <laughs> it's going to be a while before. I mean, if it if it's the Mars Banks team up, you know, for me, it's just gold. Yeah, and again, I'm not. You know, I I love this creative team. But I'm not. How can I? How can I hear this? I'm not in the same position as uh, um, um, as Donnie. Like I'm not, and this is not a knock, Donnie. I mean this respectfully. I'm not the same type of homer you are in terms of. No, know, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be. Um, but no, but I'm going to give it a five and a five for story and art as well. I think it's great. It's 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 awesome. Yeah, like I said, I uh, and I like I said, I really like that Ron Mars wrote it to this point to say, you know, Kyle, he's been Green Lantern for a little while now. Yeah, and he's grown with the ring. It's not just somebody out there taking revenge. It's not just somebody out there acting on his own emotions. It's somebody trying to understand, you know, the legacy and the mind of a hero. Yeah. Oh, fantastic issue. I, I loved mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. All right, so now we move on to Guy Gardner, Warrior number 29. And this is important because this is the... Uh, and Kyle's not in this as much as the other issues because this is the opening of Warrior's Bar. Yeah. And there are there is a plent- plentitude of heroes who show up in this issue. There are so like it would take me forever to list all of them, but you see, just oh, yeah. Mar- yeah. Marvel would be jealous of these these cameos. That's how many cameos there are. Yeah, <laughs> even Marvel Studios would be like, wow, that's a lot of. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you see old JSA members and Justice League members. I mean, they all show up at Warriors Bar and Grill because this is the big opening. And of yep. course, they all get into little skirmishes and everything. But the big, the big thing that happens is Lobo shows up, and of course, there's a big scrum because it's Lobo. So, such a uh, disruptor. Maybe. Yeah, guy. Uh, at, actually, at one point, starts to fight with Captain Adam. And again, I talked earlier about one of the fights spills out onto the street, and we see uh, Sly Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Bruce Willis because the backdrop is Manhattan. And right. so they actually see, you know, the fight and they're like, you know, we don't want to get involved in this because it's, it's not a movie. So, yeah, right, right. yeah. So interestingly enough, too, one of the things that I want to point out here, even though it's mostly just this big like party, you so also. It, it's funny. Just go ahead. Note, real quick. Yeah. It's funny that the actors who would. Play. The voice of King Shark. And regrettably play Mr. Freeze, unfortunately, uh, in the, in down the road, eventually showed up in this comic. Yeah. I actually like that was probably the only thing I liked about that movie was Mr. Freeze. It wasn't a great characterization, but it was fun. Anyway, I digress. I, I like Poison Ivy, but you probably figured that. Well, yeah. <laughs> For- wait, wait, you know what? Since we're here... <laughs> For much different reasons. I thought Mr. Freeze was funny. We like those characters for much and, and, different reasons. And since I said it, Uma Thurman is Poison Ivy on the list. Okay. And so, it's great. so it made sense for me to mention it here. Yeah. yeah. And it's my show. I can do what I want. <laughs> and as far as Kyle goes, in the, again, this issue, Kyle's not the focus. We do see that Jade is at the party as well as Alan Scott. And also we see the the big thing from Kyle's perspective. He meets Arisha Rab here. 
who was at the party. No longer a Green Lantern, obviously. But he meets her and he's like, hey, aren't you know, weren't you used to weren't you at once part of the Green Lantern Corps? And she said, yeah. And, you know, and of course, he kind of apologizes to her for, you know, how Jordan's seeming death at this point. And she's like, you know, that's OK. The man that I used to love, he's not the same man anymore. Yeah, which is a ball of wax in its own right. We covered that already. Yeah. Right. So, um, again, you know, this, uh, again, from the point of view of Kyle, this wasn't focused on Kyle, but this does play into, again, this has effects on the Green Lantern mythos going forward. Uh, so yeah, I did appreciate yeah. this issue. You know what I did like, too? I, I liked the uh, brief mention and appearance of Superboy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And just how cocky he was. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it reminded me of, like, oh, yeah, I remember those days, the death and return of Superman days. And I like how Guy Gardner calls out Aquaman and Superman. He's like, "What's with the long hair?" Well, <laughs> yeah. And when that try, that guy tries to get in dressed as Superman, and oh, then yeah. Superman yeah. comes on. He's like, "I've had just about enough with all these imposters." Mm -hmm. That was pretty funny. So yeah, I thought it was decent. Um, do you want to rate this? Because there's not much really to say Kyle wise, but. No, as far as, again, it was still a fun issue to read, even yeah. though, I mean, not that much from the perspective of Kyle, but, you know, I'm going to give the writing a three and a half and give the art a five just because of all the characters that were depicted in this. It was, a, I mean, there were all these huge party scenes. It was really amazing. Yeah, I, I'll concur with that rating. Three and a half out of the slope for the story and a five for the art. All right, now we move on to, and this is one that I hadn't read in quite a while. Because I always, you know, there are always like little places that Kyle popped into at the time. And I only like really remembered one quote from this book, but I really liked going back and reading it. And that's Outsiders number 17. This is uh, Outsiders volume two. I should say that number 17. And this is when we see a, a character named Geoforce, who's another hero, show up to uh, talk with Terra. This is part of the Teen Titans Terra. Mm -hmm. The second Terra, the one that like came from Lord Chaos, not the first Terra. Yeah. Things get a little confusing. <clears throat> I'm confused already, but yeah. Confused. Right. <laughs> but uh, Kyle shows up and intervenes as though as do some of the other Titans here. And I want to call attention to one line that Kyle says, because obviously he and Geoforce have this clash. And... Roy, again, of the Teen Titans, says, oh, you know, back off, Kyle, take a breather. And Kyle says, no chance. I'm tired of being thought of as a second raider by every fossil who can't accept change. And I think that, I think what that is is kind of a meta, oh, a little like yeah. meta commentary on some of the fans who were like, you know, very against Kyle Rayner being Green Lantern. And, you know, we've heard about, you know, Ron and Daryl talking about going to cons and some people being inappropriate with them, not just saying, hey, we don't like your writing or we don't like the story, but actually, you know, threatening them. We've actually heard them talk about that before. Yeah, so, which, which is ridiculous behavior. But, yeah, I didn't notice that line. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, the, 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 unfortunately, the sad fact of it all is that behavior still happens today. Like, like, well, we see some toxic fan bases, and yeah, again, like, there are some people out there who are just like, "Well, Kyle Rayner's not for me," so yeah, I'll just, or, yeah, no, yeah. But, 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 no. Even today, with like, look at the reaction to uh, uh, John Mulan in Far Sector. Oh yeah, by some people. Yeah, and the the reaction by some people over John being the lead of the current Green Lantern run. Yeah, it's like, guys, have we learned nothing? If it's not for you, cool. Don't read it. So as far as Kyle's part in this, the, the main like narrative revolves around the country of Markovia. They show up and they kidnap Tara because she has the technology that came from that country. Again, you know, her, uh, and, and I'm talking about the powers that she has. Sure. And Kyle and Donna, Donna Troy, who also shows up, they do their best to protect their friend. And I really like the, the one moment when she shows up and stops Kyle and Geoforce from fighting. Right, and right, they right. were both like, he did it. <laughs> and 
And she's like, I don't care who did it. Just settle down, you know? <laughs> I, I love how, and again, it really shows like that Donna almost has a parental mm -hmm. vibe with the Titans, right? Yeah. By the way, she's drawn really well here, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, like I said, that's, you know, uh, uh, eventually, you know, they, the narrative revolves around Terra and Geoforce, you know, uh, Geoforce accepting the fact that this is not the sister that he knew, but she's mm -hmm. very similar. Yeah. And like him trying to come to terms with that. So yeah. I don't want to go off way on a tangent because, again, this doesn't have anything to do with Green Lantern. Sure. But that's yeah, yeah. where, and, if for no other no other reason, if you want to pick this issue up, Kyle makes again just a myriad of really cool constructs mm -hmm. in the process of this. Yeah. So and I, yeah, I, I really like the art here too. So. Oh, the art's good and and, and the story's fun. So I, I think it would be a worthwhile pickup. Mm -hmm. I'd recommend picking it up. Yeah. But how would you want to rate this? Um. In terms of art, I'm going to give it a four and a half. In terms of writing, you know, I, I'm going to give it, well, I'm going to give it a four. You know, I think they did a pretty good job at explaining what's going on. But I think if you pick this issue up just kind of in midstream, reading it all on its own, it may be a little confusing for people. It so was. that's why we do podcasts like this. Yeah. We try to do podcasts like this to connect the dots for everybody. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a four, both in writing and art for me. Um, uh, solid and uh, enjoyable, uh, uh, but you know it, it's an, another kind of appearance of recovering it. But it wasn't. It wasn't you know uh, the be all and end all. I'd say, but solid. And I yeah, I really like the one construct that Kyle uses. It's kind of like. I don't even know exactly how to say it, but it's kind of like uh, like a high tech flamethrower, and he melts one of the suits that the like the Markovians are using mm. when they kidnap Terra. And I like the line that he says here: "You boys may have the firepower, but I've got the fire." And mm -hmm. this construct that he makes again shoots fire out, and it melts one of those big mech suits. Yeah, yeah, no, um, solid stuff. A lot of fun, and like I said. Overall, um, I enjoyed uh, these four issues far more than I uh, than I did um, um, than I did uh, you know the last set that we read. That, uh, and interestingly that, enough, too, I, I do want to close with this this issue. I mean, this image because it's important to the issue. You see, Geoforce actually visit the grave of the original Terra in this yeah, at the very yeah. end. Yeah, it was a little confusing, I won't deny it, but I enjoyed it still. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a good roundup of Kyle's appearances, mm -hmm. <laughs> at least where we are in the story. And uh, and I, I again, I like that. <clears throat> I know some people will say they find it a little burdensome if for no other reason than the money. Because, you know, a character like Kyle pops in and out of these other titles. I like it because it gives you more of a like a panoramic story that you see that Kyle wasn't just in his own. He didn't just have his own problems. He was out dealing with other things from other areas of the DC universe. Makes it seem more real to me. And and I don't I agree with you in that sentiment. And I don't mind it because it's not like we're doing it every week. And so I don't. And the other thing is I can go to Comicsology now. Right. Yeah. And get and get and get get the issue for like a dollar or two dollars. Yeah. And all of these are on yeah. DC Universe Infinite too. So yeah, for the non for the yeah. Americans who are, are fortunate to have. It. But I think it's here in Canada now. I believe. But you have to access it through a phone or a tablet, right? Yeah. Well, I have mine. I usually read DC Infinite on my laptop. So you can read it from a computer? Yes, I read it on my laptop, yeah. But you have to download the app to your phone or something, right? Or no? How's no, I, I just I just go to the website and enter in my information. I don't try to read it on a phone. Some people might, but to, for me, it's it's too small. Okay, so. I got to look into this because I know it's it's around here. 
Mm-hmm. I think it, it's come, but I don't know if they have. I don't. I don't know if they have it all figured out in terms of, um, like being able to read it on a on a PC versus a tablet or a phone. Mm-hmm. So I, I have to look into that. Um, but I know. Uh, last I uh, I heard. Uh, um, um, it's finally made its way to Canada. So, uh, folks, awesome. Yeah. If you're Canadian like me, do your due diligence, figure it all out, and how it's all working. And uh, I think we can access, or we will soon be able to access, the full <laughs> enjoyment of DC Infinite. Yeah, I, so, I mean, for me, I love it because there there are always going to be comics that I read that I'm just like, okay, I may have enjoyed this. But I don't necessarily need a copy of this. Yeah, like I'm. Yeah. My position is is unfortunately, no, I don't have the space for all the titles that I want. Well, that's that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, like I wish I lived in Wayne Manor, so I could have rooms that I could just fill up with comic books. But you know, unfortunately, <clears throat> that's not real life. And I wish all my multiverse wives lived with me in Wayne Manor. But again. Not real life, <laughs> so so I have to be very prudent with with which books I'm collecting and and you know for me, Batman and Superman are my main guys, so Batman's gonna spot. I am Batman's gonna spot because I really like the yeah, that book has been a shocker for me how good it is. We gotta start covering it, Don, <laughs> Donnie. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm collecting Nightwing because Nightwing is, you know, my jam. Uh, I like Nightwing. He's my favorite, my favorite Robin. Turn, not Robin anymore. Uh, I'm collecting <clears throat> Superman action, Batman Superman, and now um, whatever, whatever, um, the, the Dark Crisis, and then mm-hmm. Slash yeah. Justice League, when that, that yeah. picks up again. And now I'm, I see now I have a conundrum, Donnie, because I may have to drop either I am Batman or Nightwing. I'm still making the decision because a brand new Daredevil number one is going to launch. Oh, there you go. And you know, Daredevil is my guy on the Marvel side. Yeah. And I'm hearing whispers of something I always wanted, Donnie. We may be fixing to get another Blade title. Nice, nice. And so Nightwing and I am Batman maybe off the list. The, the list before too long. So it's constantly evolving, but I have a limit of like six to eight books physically that I can. Well, get. yeah, that's understandable. Yeah. Beyond everything else is digital. So if DC Infinite is here and it's it's a better viewing experience, reading experience than Comicsology, then I'm going to just get DC Infinite because. Oh, it's it's wonderful. Yeah. What Amazon has done to Comixology and the reading experience is a pain in the behind. Yeah. Be so very, I've heard. So I've heard. To yeah. be very polite. So Amazon. I like giving you money when it when it comes to comics and you know all the other crap I buy on Amazon. <laughs> but fix it. Get on it. Or better yet, put Comixology back to normal because it wasn't broke. I don't know why you guys felt like you had to fix it, but I digress. But if you want to hear me complain about stuff like this on social <laughs> media, you can add Adam underscore Leaf fan or Leafs fan, as in you know multiple Leafs because yes. the whole team of them. Right. Uh, and I often complain about them too when they're not doing what I want them to do. And so that's where you find me, Donnie. Where do they find you? Not complaining about things because you often don't complain. You can find me on Twitter as the Emerald Enthusiast. Let's talk comics. Let's talk collectibles. Let's talk Green Lantern. And until next time, remember that Green did Lantern. You give me, did you give me a social media handle? Adam underscore Leafs fan. Yeah, I did. I did you yeah. did? Okay. Yeah. Oh, and the Facebook group is uh, what there I we go. It was a Facebook group. Right. It's somewhere in the link below. Click that. I'll add you, and we can continue the conversation there. But until next time, remember that. Kyle Rayner as Green Lantern, despite being somewhere, not featured right now, is forever.
from his first appearance throughout the DC Universe to the last. So long, everybody. So long, everyone. <laughs>